everybody. The Savior's Champion audiobook is coming out to any day now. Keep your eyes peeled. It'll be on Amazon, it'll be on iTunes, and of course, it'll be on Audible. Even better, if you're new to Audible, you can open up an account and listen to the TSC audiobook for free. I'll have more information about this soon. There may or may not be a giveaway, so get excited. Moving on, today's topic comes as a special request from not one, but two of my patrons over on Patreon. Both Stephanie Herrera and Lauren Bruder want to know all about writing the first chapter of your novel, aka the biggest clusterfuck of the entire writing process. I think this is a great topic. Stephanie and Lorraine, you have fantastic taste. I'm breaking down my top 10 tips for writing the first chapter of your novel. We're covering how to make it amazing and impactful, and also how to survive the process with your sanity intact. Number one, you're not gonna hook anyone with the first sentence, so get over that right now. Everywhere you go, you'll see people spouting off the importance of the first sentence. If it's not the most interesting sentence in your book, readers are gonna run for the hills. This is kinda bullshit. I'm not encouraging you to write a shitty first sentence, but no one is hooked one sentence deep. Usually it takes a chapter to get someone sucked into a story, so better advice would be to make sure that something interesting and impactful happens on the first page. Keep in mind the first sentence is still important, but too many writers try to make their first sentence as unique as possible, and instead they just make an ass of themselves. Pro tip, if your first sentence is an over-the-top metaphor or simile, you're probably being obnoxious. Number two, begin where the story begins. The number one question I get about writing the first chapter is, but Jenna, I don't know where to start. Start where the story starts. Take a look at every generic story you've ever heard. For example, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Does the story begin with the history of the Three Bears lineage and how they came to be? Does it start with Goldilocks in school, doing homework, or getting her locks so pleasantly golden? No, it starts with the bears leaving their home and Goldilocks trespassing like the privileged bitch she is. No one gives a shit about anything that happened before then because it's not relevant to the story. No Number three, introduce your main character. Your first chapter should follow your protagonist, or else there's gonna be issues. But Jenna, my first chapter follows the villain. Sounds like you've written a prologue. But Jenna, my first chapter begins hundreds of years before the protagonist is even born. Sounds like you've definitely written a prologue. But Jenna, I have five protagonists. Then the first chapter better follow at least one of them. Whoever you introduce as the focus of your first chapter, that's who readers are gonna become invested in. If you follow a random character and then switch over to the protagonist in the second chapter, that shit's annoying. Plus, you've failed to get readers interested in literally the most important character in the book. Number four, give a snapshot of the main character's life. A lot of books follow a similar formula. The main character is living their normal life, then the conflict is introduced, and their life completely changes. Because of this, it's important to give a brief look at what normal life looks like for the main character. Emphasis on brief. This is where a lot of writers get hung up. They'll start their book off with chapters upon chapters of the main character going to school or going to work. You know, the boring shit. You can give the reader an idea of this person's life without taking them through every tedious minute of it. Instead of having the character wake up, brush their teeth, and sit through an entire day of school, start the book at the end of their very last class while they're staring at the clock waiting for the bell to ring. This lets the reader know how mind-numbingly dull their life is without making the reader want to end it all with them. Number five, introduce the problem. Some writers tell you to start the book with the inciting incident, and that is most definitely an option. However, as a reader, I more often than not see the inciting incident in the second chapter. Instead, the first chapter usually introduces the problem, what is going wrong in the main character's life. 
This is different than the inciting incident. The inciting incident propels the protagonist into action, whereas the problem is a shitty situation that instigates the inciting incident. For example, say your book is all about a quest to find the most powerful sorcerer in the realm. The inciting incident is when your protagonist sets out on their quest. Thing is, why are they setting off on this quest in the first place? What is their motivation? Maybe their father is dying, and the only person who can save them is this sorcerer. That right there is your problem. Therefore, you introduce Dying Dad in Chapter 1, and in Chapter 2, the quest begins. Number six, introduce the world as it becomes relevant. One of the biggest mistakes writers make, especially sci-fi and fantasy writers, is turning their first chapter into one massive world building dump. No one gives a shit. The reader does not need an entire history of the galaxy before the story has even begun. And I'm willing to wager that 75% of the information you presented isn't relevant to the story at all. Instead, adopt the method of explaining bits and pieces of the world world as it becomes relevant. When the characters are navigating difficult terrain, that's when you can address the climate. When they visit the castle, that's when you can address the monarchy. And yes, a little exposition is sometimes necessary, especially in sci-fi and fantasy, but limit this information to the essentials and by no means should the first page of the first chapter begin with an info dump. Number seven, show don't tell. Another big mistake newbie writers make is using the first chapter to explain everything to the reader. You know, like they're idiots. Your protagonist's friend enters the room and the narrator says, Todd was his best friend. They'd known each other for years and loved one another like brothers. Not only is this boring as shit, but it also doesn't resonate or stir up any emotion whatsoever. Instead, show their brotherly banter. Describe them playfully teasing one another. This will communicate way more effectively that the two of them love one another like family, while also being way more entertaining to read. Number eight, make the readers care. One of the reasons it's important to introduce the problem in the first chapter is because you're trying to get the reader invested. They're not going to get emotionally involved if everything is fine and dandy. Introducing a problem will evoke the reader's empathy. Additionally, showcasing your main character's humanity is a great way to make the reader care about them. So ask yourself, what makes this person relatable? Readers don't want to see perfect people. They want to read about characters who are bullied, who are overworked, or want something more out of life. Vulnerability in the first chapter is key to making your readers invested. So put that shit out there. Number nine, move on. Do not waste time trying to perfect the rough draft of your first chapter, because it's a losing battle. Instead, move on with your story. Allow that steaming pile to stink up the space for a while. You can clean it up later. If you obsess over making the first chapter flawless now, you will never finish your book. One, because perfection is subjective, and two, because you are not yet capable of writing a flawless chapter. Writers improve as they write, which means that if you go back to edit your first chapter after the rough draft is complete, you will be addressing it as a more competent writer. Let that person make the first chapter flawless they'll get the job done. And number 10, calm the fuck down. Writing the first chapter is the scariest part of your manuscript, but it's not gonna feel this way forever. Yes, there is a lot of pressure to make this chapter amazing, but you are not doing yourself any favors by wallowing in the stress. There is no need to have an aneurysm over this. You are going to have multiple rounds of edits. You are going to have beta readers and critique partners and editors and proofreaders. There will be lots of time and lots of help to make this chapter shine. So relax. Be confident in the fact that you will get the job done. And even if you're not capable of writing a great chapter now, you will be capable when the time comes to edit. So that's all I got for you. A huge thank you to Stephanie and Lorene for requesting this topic. If you'd like the chance to have a video dedicated to you, or if you want access to tons of other awards, check me out on Patreon. We've got an exclusive writing group. We have early access to videos. There's a monthly live stream. There's signed merch. We've got tons of amazing prizes. Check it out. 
the link is listed below. Friendly reminder, the TSC audiobook is coming out very soon, so be on the lookout. There may or may not be some fun shenanigans planned. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos on Wednesdays, and if you want to be alerted as soon as I upload, ring that bell. And be sure to follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Tumblr, Facebook, and of course, you can tweet me at Jenna Moresi. Bye! This is Wimbledon. If you haven't subscribed to Jenna's channel, then by all means, go for it. The people will love you for it. Go on. Press the button. Ding that bell. See you soon.